I make it no secret how the self-publishing business is so much more than pumping out ebooks for quick profits. In fact, I've often shared a well-rounded indie author has their bases covered when publishing to ebook, print book, and audiobook. But which form of media is best to focus on? Is there one type of publication better than the other? Today, I ask one of the modern self-publishing pioneers and founder of Archangel Inc., Rob Archangel, and you'll be surprised at what he has to say. So stay tuned. Welcome to Self-Publishing with Dale, where you learn tips and strategies for publishing your own books. If you spent long enough browsing my back catalog of videos on YouTube or hung out with me for a time or two on a live broadcast, you've come to find out I'm a numbers guy. I like to focus on cold, hard data when it comes to making the best decisions on where to expand my publishing business and what I can expect on the horizon. That's why I thought I'd lean on an old friend of the channel and founder of Archangel Inc., Rob Archangel. I wanted to know what his thoughts were when it came to the battle of ebook versus print book versus audiobook. What form of publishing do you think is winning? Well, let's see what Rob thinks. Historically, for our clients, digital has probably been the, the biggest revenue generator. Mm -hmm. The overhead is really low. You can price competitively and, and shift it at various price points. Um, and, and it's really popular. I think the uh, when Kindle came out on the market, particularly for Amazon, as well as their uh, competitors, the Barnes & Noble Nook and the Kobo e-reader and so forth, yeah. um, people were really excited about it and, and uh, purchased a lot of digital books. Um, I think that personally, and, and what I've seen and heard from clients, is that there is a little bit more of a shift toward, um, toward old school paperbacks. People still like the appeal of having a good book, something that they can take with them, that they don't need to have a digital connection to. Maybe they're tired of, of being in front of a screen. They work in front of a screen all day, and when they get home or when they're when they have some leisure time, they really like being able to um, to have a, a physical book in hand that they can notate on. They can pull out their highlighter and say, "Guys, that was such a great line. I really love that." Um, so, so I think that's that's moving. It's at least opening back up or maybe evening out a little bit. Um, audiobooks are another really good market and a good example of where things are headed. Uh, personally, I would say that. 70 or 80 percent or more of the content that I consume is um, is audio or audio visual and the benefit to that um, one like we were talking about earlier you can you can kind of accelerate it um, you know you can listen to it at normal speed or at double speed depending on the programs that you have you can listen to it even more rapidly and audiobooks are a are um, in some ways a more quintessentially human way of, of communicating because we have been listening to to each other tell stories and share information for as long as we've been around. Um, we have been re reading on a wide level for you know maybe several hundred years since the the print revolution, but it's not something that um, historically has been been the way that there's information transmission. It's been you know through through action and demonstration and then interpersonal you know communication storytelling that kind of thing. And so uh, so personally, I really like audiobooks. Um, audiobooks have the added advantage of being accessible while you're doing other things. When you're reading a book, generally you can probably read a little bit faster than you can listen. Again, unless you're crazy people like us and reading it at double or triple speed or listening at double or triple speed. Yeah. Um, but, um, but even so, you know, you can, you can be doing other things in the background. You might be preparing dinner. You might be exercising. You might be taking a walk. You might be doing any number of things while engaging with that information um, transmission uh, relatively passively. And so, um, so I definitely think that there is a trend toward that. The audiobook growth market um, is, is on the way up industry-wide. Um, there are literally millions of books in the uh, Kindle store and the you know, digital bookstore. Um, far fewer of those are in the audiobook market. Um, and yet that, that market segment is growing, whereas the digital um, overall digital buying market is raising just a little bit or kind of steadying off. So, so there's more of an opportunity if you are looking to, to um, access people where they're at, you know, to fish where the fish are, are um, swimming, then um, getting into the audiobook market, I think is, um, is a good idea. It especially makes sense for the kind of books that, um, that many of the clients we work with are, are doing that are, that are shorter, that are punchier, that are a little bit more actionable, tend to be nonfiction, you know, sprawling, 100,000 word uh, fiction books are really great if you want to get engaged in a story. Um, they can be costly to produce. They basically scale basically linearly. And so producing, it takes about the same to produce 100,000 word book as 10, 10,000 word books. So, you know, think about the market impact that that has. 10 potential avenues for people to reach you via audiobook 
if you have smaller books versus you know a single one for um, you know a fiction book that's really long. Um, so yeah, in general, I think that's the the trend line. Audiobooks seem to be seem to be really promising.